clumps of dirt and moss tied together, sticks tied together with twine, sharpened to a point, some had writing, some didn't, when these objects did have writing, she noticed it looked like Chinese, or like hieroglyphs, exactly like I had described to her of course, she was struck by this, but she was pretty consumed with the wrap-up process, since we were nearing the end of our stay, plus it just didn't seem relevant to our report, still, she jotted down notes about these items just in case, later, after we left, she looked over her notes, and made a weird discovery, these items were all concentrated within a specific area, every single household was sitting more or less in the perimeter of the hospital, a big circle all the way around, she believed this was likely a coincidence, I still don't know what to think. I am a 22-year-old in England. I go to college and consider myself fairly intelligent. I am, or was, a skeptic and don't touch drugs or a clohor. I have never had any mental illness or been depressed. I have always enjoyed scary films and horror fiction. I never really believed the supernatural stuff that I consumed but loved the thrill. Now I don't watch scary films or read scary books. And I sleep with a nightlight. My life literally changed two weeks ago when I was walking home from my nans. I am her only support through the pandemic and take her essentials like food and do her cooking. My mum is disabled and so I do all the caring which I don't actually mind. My nan is 87 and pretty funny for an old lady. I made her some tomato soup and toast, filled her hot water bottle and made sure all the windows and doors were locked before I was going to leave. I also fed Marston, her ragdoll cat. He gave my hand a nibble as I stroked him and then wished my nan good night and set off on the 20 minute walk home. It was 8 p.m., so not really late, but it was dark and slightly foggy. The road I walk home is near a large factory, Pines, and cuts through an industrial estate. The industrial estate, which has lots of lorries and trucks parked up while the drivers get some sleep, is quite creepy at night as it is a long, straight road with nobody about. Some of the factories are lit up, but it is still dark and secluded. I don't listen to music when I walk as I like to hear if anybody is approaching. I am pretty tall but thin, so I wear lots of layers and a big hood in winter to look more intimidating, stupid I know. Once you get through the industrial estate, you come to a small bridge that goes over a train line, cross that and you come to a small street with houses on both sides. I like reaching this part of the journey because I feel safe there. It's only a five minute walk through the street though before you get to a small gate that leads across a farmer's field towards the canal. I was pretty hungry and was munching on some crisps that my nan always give me, with a chocolate bar, for my walk home. I finished the crisps and squished the empty packet into my jacket pocket. I unlatched the small gate and continued on through the farmer's field. You can hear the stream that runs alongside the canal but not much else. Everything seemed very quiet because I had just been listening to myself crunch crisps for the past few minutes. It takes around 5 minutes to get across the field, which has a path, and I usually jog that part as it is creepy. I didn't jog the night it happened. 
I walked because the ground was very muddy and I didn't want to splash dirt on my pants. I wish I had jogged. My life might be very different if I had. I have a smartphone but don't really look at it a lot, especially when I'm walking at night. If I look at my bright phone screen then I lose my night vision and find it hard to see my surroundings. Well, I got a message just as I was halfway down the path and I looked at my screen. It was a message from my cousin asking if I would be online later for a few games of football. I replied that I wouldn't put my phone away. I had only glanced at my phone for a few seconds but it was enough to destroy my night vision and make me feel blind. That's when I heard a gurgle and a slop of something wet land near my left shoe. I panicked when I heard the sound jump to one side, landing in a huge muddy puddle. I scrunched my toes in my shoe to try and keep it from being sucked off my foot and into the mud. I tried to tell myself to relax and not make things worse by overreacting. I couldn't hear any more noises or movement around me and so I reached into my pocket to get my phone out for some extra light. I was pretty confident that if I didn't panic, I'd be able to free my shoe and get on my way. I could feel a different atmosphere around me. That's the best way to explain it, the air just felt different not electrical but full of energy. It's really hard to explain this in words so I'm sorry. I knew that I was only 5 or 10 minutes away from my street and would soon be in my comfy chair beating my cousin at football. I couldn't imagine how wrong I was. There are no street lights down the patch obviously and it's just trees on both sides. I pressed the button on my phone and the screen flashed bright again. Her face was next to my right hip. Her eyes were milky white and her bloated face was bluey green in the light. Half of her scalp was missing and I automatically gagged at the smell when she spoke. Ollie's come looking for me, she said. Her voice sounded wet. I ran, leaving my shoe in the mud. I ran until my lungs burned. I didn't play football with my cousin that night. I didn't sleep either. The next day my mum came into my room to check on me because I am usual the first person up. She gave me a cup of tea and noticed my hand shaking off at some point and it was now early afternoon. Oh, you must have heard about that young lad. It's horrible, isn't it? Did you know him? She asked. Who? What boy? I asked. I was confused and felt literally insane from last night's incident. His name was Ollie. They found him in the woods near Hines this morning. Pete hung himself. The park in my neighborhood has a track that goes around it. One mile. Nobody's ever there between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. so that's when I like to go. Walk around the track once. Second time there's a guy kneeling along this ravine that borders the track on one side. His back is facing me. I don't see him at all at first bc his clothes and hair kinda blend in with the tall grass and trees behind him. When I realize he's there his head turns around to face me. The next few things happen all at once. He stands up and I get a sense of fight or flight. He begins to charge at me and I freeze. 
There's suddenly a loud squawking above me, blackbirds on a power line, and I look up. When I look back at the guy he's gone. MFW. Used to live in a high crime part of town. Mostly black, mostly poor. The apartment complex I lived in was absolute shit. And I lived alone. One night I'm home. About to head out to grab a sixer. As I reach for the doorknob there's a pounding at the door. I freeze. The door is shaking in front of me. Feels like it's going to come crashing down. Whoever is on the other side is going to come in and kill me and take all my shit. Pounding goes on for a full 10 seconds. No voices, just pounding. It stops. Everything is silent outside. After a minute I look through the peephole. Nobody there. Tell a neighbor about it later and he just says happens sometimes, this place ain't right. I didn't hear any footsteps walk up or walk away, and the place was a creaky piece of shit. WTF. Four years ago I went to the beach. I hate the beach, can't swim, but it was a birthday party for a friend. Friend has a sister, Melissa. She's the typical hot older chick, I have a huge crush on her. Why aren't you swimming anon? Friend pipes in, he can't swim. Fuck you bro. Melissa's eyes light up and she says she'll teach me. I try to casually decline. But she insists and I don't want to look like a pussy. Then she grabs my hand and says, come on. She's smiling at me. I'm melting. And kinda getting a boner. Trying not to stare at her fat tits bulging under her bright red one piece. She leads me out into the water, her ass cheeks jiggling as she jogs into the waves. Welp, can't refuse now. The blood rushing to my dick makes me momentarily forget I can't swim. She's holding me kinda close, still smiling at me as she leads me farther and farther out. She thinks all I need is to get out there and I'll naturally start swimming. She doesn't know that as a little kid I nearly drowned to death when my cousin was supposed to be watching me. I'm traumatized by the fucking water. As soon as we're chest deep and her tits disappear from view I kinda snap back to reality. My head is suddenly on a swivel. I'm rubbernecking from the shoreline that's disappearing on one side to the ocean stretching out endlessly on the other. I begin to scream. Melissa's eyes go white as I start flailing and twisting and slapping at the water, screaming the whole time. Her voice is shaking as she tries to tell me it's okay. But I pull her towards me and begin climbing on top of her. I just want to feel something under my legs. I'm forcing her head underwater as I do this. The shore looks so fucking far away. I feel like the ocean is pulling me into its jaws. Melissa manages to get out from under me and coughs up water as she pops her head back over the waves. I'm still grabbing at her pulling her. There's panic in her eyes. She